Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review this Sovel SV04 3D printer. This box is huge. IDEX stands for Independent Dual Extruder, which means that we can print two colors at the same time. We can also double the print speed using duplicate mode to make both extruders work together to print two models at the same time. I would like to thank Sovel for sending me this printer to review. I will go through the assembly really quickly, and we will see what we can do with this IDEX printer. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. We have the base, the gantry, a color touchscreen, two filament residue holders and wipers, two filament spool holders, two filament sensors, some tools, cables, and the menu. I will start by connecting the gantry to the base. Since this thing is so big, I will have my brother hold it for me and then insert two long M5 by 70 millimeter screws to the side and tighten them. Do the same to the other side. There are also two end covers for the extrusions and I will put them on. Next, we will install the two filament residue holders and wipers. Loosen the two screws next to the stepper motor and I will do the right side first. Just hang the holder on and tighten the screws back. Do the same to the left side. We can always adjust the height as we need to make sure the soft rubber on the holder can wipe off the filament residue every time the print head comes back and goes out. After that, mount the color touch screen on the front right corner using two M5 by 8 mm screws. Then, install the filament holders. I will put them at the far right and far left and make sure the T-nuts are locked in place. Then, twist the roll on the mount. Next, install the two filament sensors, one for each spool holder. We can now connect some cables. Starting with the filament sensors, the cables are placed right next to each filament sensors. It's actually an extension, so you need to connect it to the cable at the bottom next to the Z-axis stepper motor to connect to the motherboard. Next, we will connect the Z-axis stepper motor. There are two Z stepper motor cables from the motherboard. The short one connects to this side and the longer one connects to this side. Then, we will connect the ribbon cables for the extruders, one for each. Make sure to lock the cable in place with the side clips. Finally, do the touchscreen cable. Before we connect the power, we need to make sure the voltage is set correctly. By default, the printer is set to 230 volts, but if you are in the US or anywhere that uses 115 volts, you need to flip the switch at the back. Okay, we can connect the power and turn it on. First, we will go to settings and do the bed leveling. Before using the auto bed leveling sensor, I will set the Z offset by using the paper test. Move the number up and down until the paper lightly scratches the nozzle. Then select AUX leveling, which lets the print head move to all four corners and level the bed. This part is even more important for an IDEX printer. When you're using duplicate mode, both extruders are working together on different areas of the bed. You really want to make the bed as level as possible, as the bed leveling sensor won't help much in this case. Then, we can use the sensor to do auto bed leveling and probe 16 points on the bed. I will try to use the two rolls of 200 gram PLA filament that came with the printer. Let's run a calibration test. Since this test will use both extruders to print two colors, instead of single mode, we need to select dual mode. Then we can select print. The calibration file would be the one we want to print. It starts with the secondary extruder and it will print two rulers on the X and Y axis, followed by the primary extruder printing the same rulers. We can check the ones in the middle, which have another layer of marks on them. The Y axis is aligned perfectly as this is a Cartesian style printer. The print bed moves as the Y axis, so you don't have to set any offset at all. But for the X axis, it seems we need to adjust the secondary extruder to the right. According to the instructions from Sovel, if we want to move it to the right, we need to subtract from the current offset number. Let's go to settings and set hot end offset. Y is currently set as zero and we don't need to change it. For X, the current value is 3.35. Since we want to move it to the right, we need to set it to a smaller number. Let's try three. We can now print the rulers again and see how they align.
Okay, it looks perfect. Let's try some test prints. First, I will print a dual color cube on the SD card. This cube is aligned okay. I will now go to the computer, set up the software, and slice the models from my own computer. Since this IDEX printer has a few different modes, I don't want to create all these profiles in my Cura. To make it simple, I will just install the slicer that came with the printer, and install this Sobel skinned Cura. Click Get Started, Agree, and Next. As there are a few different modes, I will pick the single extruder mode first. Single mode 01 is the primary extruder. Click next to add this printer. To add another mode, we actually need to add another printer. This time, we will select single mode 02 for the second extruder, followed by copy mode, dual mode, and mirror mode. To start, I will slice the benchy. I would like to use copy mode. Let's keep the default profiles. Slice this mode and copy it to the SD card. Before we print this file, we need to change the mode from dual mode to duplicate mode, which is the same as copy mode. As you can see, in this mode, the moves of both extruders are identical to each other. We can expect two of the exact same benches, just in different colors. Now, we are starting to see some stringing here. I think there are two reasons for this. First, the sample filament that comes with printers are generally not super high quality and are just for calibrating and testing purposes. The second reason is the retraction settings. We may need to change the retraction distance in the slicer to add one or two millimeters. Okay, as you can see, the stringing of these benches is a little bit too much. Besides that, the cooling and overhanging look okay. I will switch to some better quality filament. I will use Hatchbox White PLA and Prusa Gray PLA filament to continue. Let's use the same duplicate mode to make a chest set. This time, I will still keep the retraction settings unchanged. Let's just change the filament and see how it prints. There is still some stringing, but it's better than the sample filament. So, it seems like besides the filament, we also need to adjust the retraction settings. I will change another roll of filament and replace the Hatchbox white PLA with Prusa Galaxy Black PLA to print the chessboard. I will now use dual mode instead of copy mode. Import the chessboard to the slicer, select this part, and click on the primary extruder. Select the second part and click on the secondary extruder. Then, we can merge these two models. Place it at the center of the bed, save this to the SD card, and start printing. As you can see, this chessboard and the whole set came out pretty nice. Okay, we are going to take care of the stringing before we do more test prints. This time, I will print the same benchy, but change the retraction distance from 3mm to 4mm. In fact, a direct extruder generally uses something between 0.5 to 2mm, and a Bowden setup requires 4.5 to 6.5mm, but it seems this extruder requires more retraction distance. Let's slice this model again. Before we can start the print, we have to change mode to single and use the primary extruder to print this benchy. I will start by printing with the same blue sample filament, which strings the worst, so we can compare how much this new retraction improves the stringing. It looks much better, and this kind of stringing is acceptable. Next, 
I will try to print with the Prusa Gray filament and see how it looks. Okay, we can compare the results. From left to right, 4mm retraction with Prusa filament, 4mm retraction with sample filament, and finally, 3mm retraction with sample filament. It seems the stringing issue was fixed. Next, we will try mirror mode. I will print this Japanese lucky cat, which is now holding a Bitcoin. As you can see, the cat of the original model is raising its right hand. If we use mirror mode, the secondary extruder will print one with its left hand raised, but the Bitcoin will also be mirrored. We have to change the print mode to mirror mode. And let's start the print. These two little guys are very cute. Now, I will do the thing I hate most in 3D printing, which is removing the supports. As expected, the one printed by the secondary extruder is raising its left hand, and the Bitcoin logo is also mirrored. Finally, I will try to reprint this cat with PETG and PLA. I will use PETG as the main body and PLA as support, as different filaments won't stick, so the support should be able to be removed easily. I would like to thank my friend Mickey from Australia, who also has a Silvo SV04, who told me to try this. We will change to dual mode, select the primary extruder, and we will use PETG here, and set the temperature to 235 and 85. We also need to change support, so select generate support. The support extruder would be the one on the right, and support placement would be touching build plate. For the secondary extruder, just change the nozzle temperature to 205 and leave the retraction settings unchanged. For the support materials, we don't really care if it's strings or not, as we are going to remove them anyway. Let's change the mode to dual mode and start the print. The sample filament with 3mm retraction strings a lot, but we only need to use them as supports, so it doesn't really matter. I mainly want to show you how I can remove the support material easily. I can just peel it off without using any force. Okay, these are all the models I have printed with this printer so far. Let's talk about what I like about this printer. Before I actually used this printer, I rarely needed something with two colors. When I needed to print something like a Sudoku set with two colors, what I did was pause the print at a specific height or layer, change the filament, and then resume the print. In some extreme cases, if you want to print something with a zebra pattern that requires changing the filament many times, you have to babysit the whole print and wait for the filament to change. In other cases, if you want two colors on the same layer, this pause and change filament method is not going to work. The IDEX printer could be a good solution. Besides that, it can also do duplicate mode and mirror mode, which can print two models at the same time to improve productivity. The best part is being able to print supports with different materials, making it so easy to remove. Normally, when I design a model with Fusion 360, I try to avoid using supports as much as I can, even if I have to sacrifice features or change how the model looks. But with this IDEX printer, this is not the case anymore. There are also a few things I would suggest the manufacturer improve on. First, there is only one auto bed leveling sensor, and it was installed on the primary extruder. Once we align both extruders at the same height, it works fine when working in single or dual mode. But when it is working in duplicate or mirror mode, the two extruders are actually printing on a different area of the bed at the same time, and there is no way the bed leveling sensor can compensate for the Z height of the secondary extruder. 
In this case, we have to make sure the bed is as level as possible by using the manual leveling knob to adjust the four corners. Second, the printer seems to print a bit slower. On average, printing a 3D Benchy took 10 minutes more than other printers, but this isn't too big of a deal. The other thing I feel is a little weird is that the direct extruders require 4 mm of retraction distance to avoid stringing, as other direct extruders normally just need 1 to 2 mm. Maybe this is another reason why this results in a slightly slower print speed, as the extruders need more time for retraction. These are all very minor issues, and they won't affect the print quality or how you use the printer once you manually level the bed and set the proper retraction settings in your slicer. Besides that, this printer is still a very solid, high-quality printer that is easy to assemble, prints pretty well out of the box, and has several different print modes that are easy to use. If you're interested in this IDX printer, I put a link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. And there's no way the bed leveling sensor can compensate for the Z height of the secondary extrude. This Sovel SV04 IDEX 3D printer. This, this box is huge. We can also double the print speed using duplicate mode by using duplicate mode to make both extruders work together to print both extruders work together to print we can also double the print speed by making the two we can also double the print speed by